Hello, everyone. This is uh, Walter Borchenko from B3K Digital in Toronto. Um, I'm uh, very proud to offer yet another fantastic Canadian photographer as, as uh, part of our webinar series on craft-level photographers. Um, I've uh, known Aiden for a few years, and when I first saw his work, what really impressed me was the fact that there was a certain feeling to the work that seemed to be a nod to the classic portraitists of of Hollywood of of the the almost the the 40s and the 50s. It was just really hard to see in other people's work. And as I got to know I, and I started to realize that there's also somebody here who's very flexible, somebody who can um, make changes and do things very quickly and change to the environment and what's necessary. Um, and that's that's kind of the story with with Aiden, as far as I'm concerned. It's it's the opportunity today for that to be shared. So before I introduce Aiden, I've got a couple of uh, housekeeping things. Um, we've done these sessions for those of you who have joined us before uh, a couple different ways. But today you're welcome to ask questions anytime. Uh, we have disabled the uh, chat portion, but the questions portion is open, and we're happy to um, to have uh, questions come in. Um, we will uh, stop for questions as we go, meaning if there are particular images that uh, you're interested in knowing more about, it's a good thing to just ask those questions. So um, talking about, you know, this this uh, whole process that Aiden's gone through, you know, as I got to know Aiden better and I started to talk, found out we had some books in common. Uh, Aiden introduced me to a whole bunch of books. I introduced him to a bunch of books. In no time at all, I started to realize Here's somebody who studies as much as 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 works on his photography, and and through that process, it creates something that's a nod to the past while creating something that's completely about today and and feels personal. So, with that in mind, I'd like to introduce Aiden Ford. Oh, hi everybody! Thanks for showing up here. I appreciate your interest. Um, I take it we can see that first image, yes, Walter? Yes, everybody can see that. Yep. Okay, yeah, well, that, uh, I'm not going to bore you too much with the where I came from and all that, but I just wanted to show that as a sort of seminal image of me standing there with the headphones on in the top right corner, and my wife with the orange sweater on, and we're standing in front of uh, monitors. As you can see, those monitors are somewhere out of the past, and that's almost 20 years ago on the set in Winnipeg of her first adaptations. She's the author of the Murdoch Mysteries, which is a big TV series now around the world. And um, I got introduced to a camera, uh, a chap walking around with a camera in a black box. And he was a very friendly, very lovely guy. His name is Steve Wilkie. And I said, what's in the box? He said, oh, I keep the box around the camera so I can mute the, the shutter. And they don't hear me when I'm shooting. So he was a set photographer or a stills photographer. And now uh, the history of this for me was that I'd walked into that place and I thought, hmm, that's a good job. And then I realized as a child, because I had done television commercials as a child myself, I'd been on TV shows as a child myself, a young kid in New York, growing up in New York. My mother was a Broadway dancer, and my father was, uh, he was one of the originators of the Today Show, and he did a lot of uh, commercials in television. So I, a long jump, a long leap from the past to the future, and I thought, this, I would like to do this. I had a camera at the time. I forgot to tell you, Walter, I had a three megapixel Fuji camera, and we'd just come back from the Isle of Lewis in the Hebrides, and I was taking loads of pictures there. So that segue to Steve Wilkie, and I thought, I want to get into the stills union. I want to become a stills photographer. And I, um, se seven years later, uh, I got my first job on this show here. I'll show you. Sacrifice. And that was a uh, non-union job, but it was the one that kicked me into the union. And uh, as you can see, you've got Cuba Gooding, Christian Slater there. Those are all my shots from the gallery that we did. And then Kim Coates is in the corner on the bottom right, as you can see him screaming and yelling. <laughs> anyway, uh, that's going to link to something shortly that I'll tell you about. Anyway, but back to this. This is typically what I do for film and TV. I go on the set, and this was a, a film uh, that was shot up in North Bay. And uh, this was about four in the morning. And this young lady plays a 15-year-old teenage prostitute who picks up truckers. And it's a sad story, but it also has a happy ending. So I can tell you that much. But I love the job, honestly. I go there, I pick up the camera, and I think, this is what I was intended to do. So 
that's the brief story of how I got started in film and TV. And I'm just showing you this photo because this is Billy Campbell. Now, Billy Campbell has won the Canadian Screen Award four years in a row for <laughs> Cardinal. And, and this is a television series that won all the awards last night. It swept it again. Murdoch Mysteries won most audience watched for Canada, but Cardinal swept the awards. Dark mystery stories, dark stuff. I always loved that as a kid. And I got to work on Cardinal last year in 2019 in February in minus 24 degrees conditions. <laughs> Imagine that. You want to achieve a goal, man, you got to go through a lot of stuff, right? So I wanted to work on that show. So they gave me a day on the show. And I and and here's Billy Ken, and I love that shot. I think that's a great photo of him. Anyway, let's carry on to some good stuff now. And I go to this and I find that I believe, right? Great. All right. Yes. Aha. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So so let's segue here. This is now in 2016. And uh, I got uh, hired to do a show called Bad Blood for City Television, which is now on Netflix. So if you haven't, you should check it out because it's great. But this photo was from the key art that I was given by the through the broadcaster, through the publicist, to shoot on the day. And Morgan Harris, who I think presume is watching this because I know he was going to watch it, my assistant and I set up the room to shoot. Kim Coates and Anthony LaPaglia uh, on the streets in Montreal. And as you can see, this is a high key shot and they were gonna just pull that off the background. I had a, uh, by that time, I believe I had my uh, 100. I think it was either the 100 or the, or the uh, 360. I can't remember right now because that was 2016, Walter. So you'd be able to- Yeah, I can't remember. Sure. It, was, it was around there. Yeah. Okay, it was around there. So, so we're there and we, we're getting ready to shoot this these types of shots. And then the producer waltzes in and he says, I don't want to do this right now. I want to shoot this character, Lincoln with a gun, he said. I want Lincoln with a gun. Okay, so that's not that key art, right? So Morgan and I have to say, oh, how are we gonna do this? So we got we switched the lights around. I got a two by three pro photo box with a grid on it. I had it open anyway and I had a um, smaller pro photo box. And so we quickly adjusted and there's Lincoln with a gun. Now, obviously Lincoln in, in the movie portrait had his head down because there's a sense of loss, a sense of mourning. Right. In this particular case, Kim Coates and his character, Declan, he's more like Richard III. We're appalled by him and what he does, but at the same time, we're fascinated with him. We become fascinated with these dark, horrible, <laughs> guys and there's something likable about him because he plays the guitar he reads literature it's a very weird paradox however never mind that here's looking with a gun as best as we could do on a moment's spin so i was really excited that we pulled it off and and the computer was there with the producer kim Coates came over looked at the shot he loved it and so as you can see here's anthony lapaggia and he played vito rizzuto now this season one was based on this character's story and if you Google it or look it up, he was a Montreal mobster. So, of course, you know, these shows like Sopranos and Goodfellas and all that, they sort of turn these guys into Robin Hood figures, right? So this is essentially what's going on in this movie. And, of course, we as photographers and cinematographers, we have to make them look sort of like they're glorious <laughs> instead of the horrible guys that they are, right? So anyway, and there's Paul Servino who plays... Um, his father doesn't look anything like him, but anyway, they're both Italian. So, and, and uh, Paul Servino was really exciting because he's the guy who's cutting the onion in Goodfellas, right? Or cutting the uh, cutting the garlic in prison. You know, you, I'm sure many of you are familiar with the movie. So anyway, so that's kind of cool. So we kept that kind of lighting consistent for him, and and this is what they ended. I don't know if you can see the whole thing because I have my uh, webinar control panel in the right corner. Can you yeah, see the no, whole it's image? Showing. The whole thing's showing. It's good. Yeah. Okay, good. So this is what they used for the uh, final key art that they you know, distributed around in newspapers and magazines, internet, et cetera, et cetera. But also, I'll show you that. Uh, somebody sent me that picture. Uh, they saw it at King, uh, in young, young and Queen in Toronto. And I was really excited because I'd never had any of my photos on a bus before or on a streetcar or anything. So that was kind of cool to see that. So 
And there's uh, Mr. Coates and there's Mr. LaPaglia on the side of the bus. So that was cool. I really enjoyed that. Um, and so what happened was, sorry, that's two. What happened was they also, all of these photos that you see here in this montage, uh, that was from the uh, two days of uh, key art or gallery photography. You became constant in terms of shadows and light. So, and this is the company that creates that. So. This C is the Netflix show now. That was even more fun for me. However, they came around with season two. And season two, uh, well, I got to tell you, I don't know if you've seen it or not, but it's a true story. So I won't tell you what happens with Vito Rizzuto, but he's not back in season two. So if you decide to watch it, I don't want to spoil it for you. <laughs> Spoiler but, alert. Uh, and and, a, number of other, and a, a number of these other characters don't come back either. <laughs> so... You know, so uh, leave it at that for now, just in case you're interested in watching it. <laughs> anyway, um, this is from season two now. And this, again, um, I'm going to get down to the bottom of this in a sec. This is Kim Coates. And again, it's the streets of Montreal. And this was the key art that they gave me, except what's interesting, and I'll tell you the story about this in a sec. As you can see, this is definitely with the 100. And you can see the detail there. You can see the makeup practically. That's a little bit of the problem that I have with the high res stuff these days on television because it's the same thing. In the old days with film, you know, they, they used to be able to sort of hide that a bit more. There's Kim. Anyway, enough of that. Okay. So here's the story on this. And I told Walter this story and he thought it was pretty cool. So I was doing the, still, uh, the stills photography as well for this show. It's a contract. I got a contract for the stills photography, and I kept saying, am I going to do the gallery? Am I going to do the gallery? And they didn't tell me. And then finally, as, we, as there was uh, two weeks left before production ended, they said, okay, you got to go down to meet City Television. So they're in Toronto, and I had to go meet three of the people who were involved in the creative at City TV. And they first thing, I sat down with the head of the, department at City TV is he says, what kind of camera are you going to shoot this with? So I thought, hmm, good. So I said, well, I happen to have an IQ 100. You know, I started with an IQ 160, then I went and jumped to the 360, and then shortly thereafter, they released the 100. And I said to Walter, I want that. Uh, I don't want this. I want that. So anyway, I uh, it, it paid off in the sense that you know, if I had just said I have a phase one medium format system, I'm sure it would have been fine. But I told them I had the 100. And the reason they wanted to know that is because they were doing billboards on the Gardner Expressway coming into Toronto of this show. And they were doing two story uh, canvas back, uh, not canvas posters, I guess you would call it, yeah. <laughs> for, yeah, for, for, for some escape rooms. And I was, I was at a store called, uh, the, uh, it was a sporting goods store, anyway. Mountain Co-op, and I looked across the street, and there was the escape room, and there was a giant two-story picture of mine, which uh, looked great. So there you go. So that's the story with that. We used five lights here, and then they eliminated one of the lights. There was some light that was coming out where the City TV uh, logo is on the bottom. And of course, I shot this on a great, a gray seamless. So and uh, we set up this particular one the day before. Morgan and I went in. They asked for three sets. So I'll just quickly go back here. These these are cut from a different set. And Morgan and I went in there the day before and we had to put three sets together for them. So, But this was the main picture and they were really delighted with the results. And as you can see, it came out pretty good. And uh, this again is some of the characters from the gallery shoot okay, that are utilized in their promotion. But they're not the main cast, they're just some of the cast. And if you get to watch, Ryan's great. He's a great great actor. So she, these guys are great. Okay. So what happened was I went to the gym and I came home on the subway one day and I noticed the posters in the subway. So there was about seven students all having a chit chat around me from Ryerson. So I handed them my phone and I said, would you mind taking my picture next to this? Cause you know, I took the shit, I took the shot. So they were really, they were really a lot of fun. We had a good laugh, but so, there you go. I didn't go to Michigan. I happen to like Ann Arbor and I like their team. So I happen to have that hat. My wife's name's Maureen. So I figure it works. Anyway, so so that's that bad stuff. But I want to segue to um, the next thing because I'm going to go back and forth today between some of this photography I've done for film and TV and some of my personal stuff, right? So, right. Um, uh, so I know some of this is going to come up as we go, but we've had some questions like, yeah. uh, how did you get into this Shoot line of photography? Yeah. 
And and uh, yeah, there's another question I'll talk about a bit later, but um, I think that some of that will come through as we're going through here. I got into the line of photography because it was all in my background, really, with my family being being in the theatrical and television. My dad started out in TV, you know, when it first came up, right in the 1950s. So I used to go out of the Key Biscayne with him, and he'd shoot Timex commercials there with a guy coming out with his watch, his scuba diver, and Dave Garraway on uh, the Today Show. This probably goes back before some of you guys, but I was just a wee little kid going to Key Biscayne, Florida. So that was the first part. Then the second part came about because, uh, as I said, I went to the film set and I looked around and it, it tweaked with me. And I thought, that's a good job. I'd like to do that. And so I applied. I, I went to Ryerson uh, during that seven-year period for four years. Uh, and I studied, and I also took courses outside of that if I felt that it was a reasonably something to learn about. Joe McNally, people like that, I did some studying with them. But the big thing was I started at a place called the Young People's Theater in Toronto. Because while I was in school, an ad went up looking for a photographer to come, a volunteer photographer, as they put it, to come and do... Uh, stills photography from for their plays and do some poster shots for them and I came in and I talked to them and they essentially hired me and then after the first show that I shot for them they started to pay me which was nice it wasn't a lot but I got a couple hundred <laughs> bucks for it. so so yeah, yeah so that's number one and number two was I was talking to one of the guys on my uh, wife's show who was the set photographer and he said go to the CFC and go do some work there do for the Canadian Film Center uh, which is like where they train screenwriters, uh, directors. You, they actually produce little films there. And uh, so I went up there and I hammered on the door. You know, like I'm originally from New York. So like, I, like, I ain't afraid to go knocking on doors. I can tell you that much. So I went there. And then finally I got a call from one of their producers and said, okay, come up. If you want to uh, shoot on this, on this movie, come up. And I did. And I kind of earned my apprenticeship through the Canadian Film Center until I got that job on Sacrifice that I showed you. And I, right. I convinced so, them to let me shoot on that. And, and they, anyway, that's a long answer. I'm sorry. Right. But, so, uh, so let's, always, let's, uh, right. Sorry. So getting into this image. Again? Yes. Okay. Oh, yes. So anyway, uh, I, 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 wanted to do some kind of retro style photography, okay? Uh, and I'll show you. There is a book called um, you know, Hollywood Portraits. And I had a teacher at Ryerson who told me about it because he knew my interest in this black and white stuff. So uh, this I got for $5, right? <laughs> and in that book, they have diagrams of how, for example, C.S. Bull photographed, I believe, Elizabeth Taylor here. And so I thought, well, that would be fun to do. So, so I took that picture and I asked one of the actors, dancers that I knew to come to the studio with me. And lo and behold, uh, the studio was called Artscape and they had these rolling boards that were painted white. And I thought, as dividers. And I thought, okay, I'm gonna use this as bounce boards. You know what I mean? So I set up two, at the time, Emily Van Kessel came with me. She was an assistant as well. And, uh, I, and I got a great makeup artist. And, and we took, and you know, we literally got this in like three takes. You know, I just had to move the board about, around a little bit, move it back, move it forward, get the shadow detail right. And uh, so that was my first crack at doing some noir, what I call noir style or retro style photos. And, I really recommend if you go to ABE Books, you can find that. And you can see they're using continuous light there, not flash photography. So what? You can figure it out. You know what I mean? Turn the modeling light on, you know, and then use your flash and adjust your exposure. And then so it, um, maybe as an interesting sorry. side note here, a lot of the work you're showing yeah. is done with glass plate film. Like even if you look at the diagram, they're showing like a large format camera. And for those of you who aren't really familiar with glass plate, it had an enormously wider dynamic range than anything else we had after that. Um, and it's an interesting thing too, that any of you who haven't had the experience to try a phase one back, it doesn't matter which back you use, they all have this dynamic range. 
and it allows this type of lighting to happen in a much simpler way. So, you know, we'll come back to that later. But you know, Aiden, I think I think uh, I I interrupted you here, so I should get back to you. That's okay. Well, well, this was one that I wanted to try. So what I do with that is I put a little marker on all the spots of, of photographs that I'd like to try out. This is uh, Joan Crawford. This is George Rose's shot of Joan Crawford. I knew somebody who had one of these like fur coats, so I asked, this is Angela Asher, and she was in bed blood. So I asked her if she'd come into the studio and do that kind of shot with me, and she did. And um, the poor gal slipped and uh, hurt her back the day before. We were, I had five setups ready for her, five pages in that book, <laughs> and uh, she couldn't carry on after we'd done the first one. This so was she uh, like a, a one light. She actually looks like she's. Pardon? Yeah. That's because she well, is. You know, yeah, because she's in pain, right? Exactly. So it was tough, but you know, we got a good one. I thought so. So there, and and this is Greta Garbo, and I really wanted to try on the first image on the same day as that first image I showed you to get that, even with the kind of thumb shadow of coming across her mouth like that. Just and, across. And, and we kind of got it. We got it pretty close there, I thought, with Aiden. And this is Aiden again, the gal you saw in that first picture of doing the Elizabeth Taylor. And I was pretty excited about that too. So I thought, well, look, you know, I kind of, maybe I, I can do this, you know? And I got another one coming up here with Angela Piscanura. And this is also from the same book and the same era. And the thing about Angelica is she's like got a big show on TV, which is like 20 minutes workout from the 1980s. They resurrected it and they use her now, but she's a dancer. She's been in uh, River Dance. She's an actress as well. And uh, she's also half Spanish and half Celtic. And I really love the way she looks. And you know what? I love the kind of freckles on her back because freckles seem to have been coming in lately. So I asked her if we could do a studio shoot with just no makeup on and just her face. So he agreed to do it, but then she got sick on the day. So I'm still going to work on that. But anyway, I love that picture. And again, that's Aiden on the day, yet from another from another shot from the book. Uh, okay, I you know what? I brought this up after talking to you yesterday because I wanted to show you. This is George Harrell over here, the front guy, and this is his assistant, I guess. And there's yeah. his camera. Yeah. So I guess yeah. that's a glass plate camera. And that's Carol Lombard, and there's one light there, and there's a kind of kicker light there, and you must have a light coming from behind there. But anyway, here's the image on the right. And that's in a book called George Harrell's Hollywood, if you want to know the name of that book. And there's a ton of stuff in there that's just amazing. Did you want to say something, Walter? No, no, that's this is awesome. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, I think it I really it 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 that was good. Because sometimes when you somebody says something to you or asks you a question, it gives you an idea, right? So I just pulled that in today this morning. But this is interesting. I wanted to show you this because this is, it's a bit blurry, but this, is, this again is Joan Crawford. And that was the original image. And I wanted you to see the difference because in those days, you see, see what they had to do to the negative to get her that skin? Right. I don't know what they would have done. Painted over. Probably, yeah, right? I, I don't know. Retouching. It would have been a lot of retouching back in that day. Yeah. Well, apparently it took a whole day to retouch that image, according to the book. So I thought that's interesting because people look at that. You went to the movies in those days and we'd watch TV and we'd say, oh, my God, she's so beautiful. But like she's like a normal person. This is what she looks like. That would be considered in now because freckles went crazy. I, I mean, on Instagram, and so many portraits with freckles. You know what I mean? So, yeah, whatever. that's true. And, and uh, I got some dance stuff to show you later, but I just wanted to show you this because this, this was, again, coming from that my love of that era this is a uh, heather a dancer who i photographed at a show down at a place called the rivoli and they used to have these uh, sort of cabaret shows down there and i asked her if she'd come into the studio with me but i said i'm going to make you up to look like a 40s gal right so i got a great makeup artist and these apples and everything was something she used in her show and i thought that's eh, kind of like eve you know the idea of eve so this hair is called veronica lake veronica lake style hair and I love it. The peekaboo cut, called peekaboo, and it was huge in the 40s. So much so that during the war, they had to have uh, uh, her make a documentary about what to do with your hair if you worked in a munitions factory, because a lot of people would get their hair caught, and people sometimes tore their hair off and a bit of their scalp. So, wow. you know, women loved this haircut. It went crazy. Veronica Lake was the biggest uh, movie star for her era. 
for her few years that she had her day in the sun. So I was pretty happy with that. That is an FAS shot, but I love the light there. I love the feeling of the picture. And I was really excited when I got the final image. And this is a gal called Kelly Lamb, who I work with on Letter Kenny. And she, uh, she, had, she doesn't look anything like this. We just made her up and gave her that 40s look. And that's Kelly again there. And this is a model that I've used, and I'm blocking her name for some reason, but she became famous for some accidental walk-on water pro product that she was selling on a show, and she went viral. And I, I'm blocking her name now, so I, I'm, forgive me. But anyway, it just shows you that the different shape, the reason I brought this up, if you look at her neck and her face, you know, it's a similar bounce light that I showed you with the first image that I did in this part, but uh, it's almost like the a shape of her face, it's almost like it's... Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Like a different effect. It's a completely different feel. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. So anyway, and this picture I'll show you was uh, inspired by Albert Watson's work because I just love his work, and uh, he uses a lot of bounce light. And because I work on film sets, most of the directors of photography, you know, they often stay away from direct lighting. They bounce the light, you know, and right. uh, or they'll or they'll diffuse the light through a screen, right? And uh, because they want it softer. And the effect of using that bounce light can often, especially if the board's painted white, uh, I find it makes it even softer and it creates a different feel to it, you know? So I think, you know, we don't have to just blow the light right at the subject, you know what I mean? It's like you can do that. So this ended up on the cover of a tech magazine. They liked it so much. So, and I always call it the Game of Thrones look, you know? <laughs> so whatever, the retired queen of the Game of Thrones, right? And I think this is the final image in this particular uh, tr uh, tray of photos. But this is an actress who worked on Letterkenny with me as well, Talisa. And I really loved her look. Again, I thought she had kind of, I've got other stuff of hers, but a 40s kind of feel. I was drawn to that. I keep saying, you got to go in the studio and let me do a 40s shoot with her. But she lives in Sudbury. so. And uh, I noticed on the uh, railway station that the trains would come through. So I said, let's go down to the train station. Let's finish there. This was with a pro photo. One light, and also the the backlighting is from the sunset, and uh, I call it uh, "Love in Vain," the Rolling Stones song "Love in Vain." Just suited her look and everything. So there you go. So I love that picture. Anyway, that's that one. So, so I, maybe next you section. can chatter while I, I have. All right. So next I section here. Uh, we've had a few comments uh, come in here. There's uh, yeah. somebody who said that they, they picked up an ebook uh, with a bunch of Harrell's images in it, and you know, obviously, they appreciate that. Uh, there's also someone who noted yeah. that, of course, uh, a lot of the, the the black and white work, there were pencils used on negatives, and then the prints were also probably uh, retouched with dyes and stuff. So, you know, I know it was right. quite the process back then. You know, we've been spoiled with Photoshop and all the things we can do today. And it's, yep. it's a it's a pretty seriously different look. All right, so just to give you a sense of time, I uh, we're about halfway through. So uh, okay, cool. Yeah. Um, next section. Okay. Well, again, as you can see, I'm a little bit obsessed with the periods. So uh, yeah. I went to see Samson and Delilah when I was a kid growing up about four or five times because I always wanted Samson to survive. Victor Mature and uh, the German actress, what's her name? Austrian actress. Anyway, um, and this is a belly dancer. So I have a lot of belly dancers in this next tray of photos. And I said to her, look, you know, I really want to do, you know, you from Samson and Delilah. I want you to be Delilah. So we laid out the backdrop on the floor and threw a bunch of sprinkles on it just for the hell of it. And uh, I got a pro photo uh, for Nell. And uh, I was really happy with the result. I got my Delilah. <laughs> so Although yeah. she's in color in the movie, whatever. You know, so anyway. <laughs> Okay, why won't this carry on here? Sorry. Ah, yeah, okay. So I told you my mother was a dancer. She danced for Leonard Bernstein, actually. And, uh, but she actually studied with uh, a modern, the famous modern dancer, Martha Graham. And this actress, this dancer, I'm sorry, is from the Nova Scotia Ballet. Her name's Kate Houston. And I said, you know, I don't want to do ballet with you. I want to like stick you in a bunch of cloth and do this shot that Martha Graham did of herself. So she was fine with that. So we actually did a China ball, like a $12 China ball with a light above her. And that was it. I just threw one light on her 
and we created that, that. And I was pretty happy with that. And yeah. and I got her her hair is a bit thinner. I couldn't quite get the Veronica Lake thing going there, but I gave it a shot. I was pretty uh, pretty happy with that. And again, this is uh, an Egyptian belly dancer named Nada uh, Nada El Mizria, and she saw that first photo that I showed you. But I didn't want to do, I wanted to do color with her because she had this red sparkly thing. So again, we used the pro photo for Nell there and I had a bit of a backlight there on the, on the ground there, so. Now this is different. This is something I did with the same dancer, but we did that in the studio and I was really excited about, I'd seen uh, Joe McNally doing some work with the belly dancer and he had a couple of Fresnels in the background, tungsten Fresnels, and okay, that, that'd be fun. So I, uh, I got Nada to come into the studio. This is before they did a big show. And we combined one light uh, in front of her and those two Fresnels, which I, well, they're small. They're not Fresnels, they're continuous lighting you guys have. I got them from B3K. And we messed around and I really liked that one. And you could see the effect is kind of interesting, eh? Yeah. That's it. And again, this is a bit more abstract. And this again is uh, Angelica Skinura, who I showed you in that original series of the black and whites. And uh, again, she's, uh, this is more like using that backlight to sort of create a painting from that, that she twirled around from her, whatever you would scarf or whatever. And it's incredible actually, that effect. I love that effect, so. And this is Heather again, the one you saw with the Veronica Lake haircut, except this time we went outside and Another influence as a child was watching this very famous short called uh, The Red Balloon, it's about 20 minutes or something. And I thought, I'd like to do that, something like that with the dancer. So we went down to the Blue Air Viaduct in Toronto underneath it, and uh, we just had fun with it. it was a it's, it's interesting how many times, Aiden, it seems like you have a creative influence from something you've seen, or a book you've read, or a photograph right. you've seen. And right. And although you reinterpret these, is certainly a lot of the things you've referenced I've seen in one way, shape, or form. It's absolutely your own. It's unique. Mm -hmm. It's not okay. the same. And yet it's a nod to to what was done before. Correct. Well, well, that leads us to a discussion about Rembrandt. And I went to Rembrandt's studio in uh, Amsterdam back in 2016 in the summer there, or 15. I can't remember one or the other. And um, I was really uh, taken by his studio because uh, if you ever get a chance to go there, it's fantastic because it's a window and then part of the roof is cut out. So it's like an L-shaped thing. Part of the roof is open and the window on the side. And I thought a lot of the Rembrandt lighting that we do clearly comes from that painter. So we are inspired by that. The lighting that they used in that era was phenomenal for the paintings. So anyway, I was just gonna say that. And this is Victoria again, and uh, I was very inspired by Albert Watson. And I thought, oh, I'll just have to do a dancer with a scarf hanging around her. So oh, she leapt into the air and gave me that look. Oh, yeah. And now here comes another influence, which is kind of fun. And again, this ended up on the cover of this one, ended up on the cover of a tech magazine. But I'll describe to you what was going on here. Uh, the gal who loaned us the fur for that shoot with Ang Angela Asher that I showed you at the beginning when she was in pain, she had this uh, kind of bodysuit thing or whatever. What would you call that? Uh, no, what do you call that where you tie it? A bodice of some anyway, type. You know what I mean, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And I said, you know, I could really use that with this. This is uh, Caitlin, a gal named Caitlin. She's not only, she does some ballet and she's a model. And, and my influences here are like, I'll totally tell you, Stevie Nicks, because I loved rock and roll in the 60s and 70s. Stevie Nicks and uh, Jimmy Page, there's a guitar, right? and uh, dance and burlesque and you know stevie nicks hat so we did that stevie nicks here for sure you know i can yeah. see that one. so but um i just kind of combined all those things and of course you and i talked about yesterday the whole no notion i like the light here a little bit better behind her in terms of the smoke but uh the dynamic range that we uh can find within the uh, phase systems, especially the, the 100. It's just great, you know, so if that was a little bit blown out, you know, you can pull that back quite a bit, which I was pretty pleased about actually. Oh, sorry, I jumped the queue here. Okay, and this is another belly dancer that I worked with on that little one minute commercial or whatever it is, documentary you did. 
And, yeah, actually, uh, we, we, I, should, I should mention that if 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 yeah. uh, any of you who are watching go to our um, Instagram page, uh, we've got a video, a, a one minute video we did with um, Aiden where he actually did a live shoot in in our courtyard in in behind our our uh, offices there. So it's kind of cool. But this this is the woman who was the model, right? That's correct. And right. and she's a belly dancer. She's from Colombia, actually. Uh, but you know what? What's interesting to me about this photo is that we built that set outside completely. We built like a tent for her to work in. And if you yeah. see the video, if you see the video, you'll see it doesn't look anything like this. And right. uh, uh, I was I was so pleased with the color here. This was the IQ three one hundred. What's right? the name of that one? Three sixty. Yeah, three one hundred. The other one. Yeah. Oh, the the trichromatic. Sorry. Yeah, and uh, again, this was during pre-show. This is a Japanese belly dancer. So, you know, I love the costumes. You know, they're so much fun, right? I'm just showing you this picture because I don't think it's particularly an amazing picture. But what I try to do, you see the little blur behind her? I try to create something that's different than you normally see when I take a photograph, right? Like, okay, well, I think I'll put some blur in, you know? I mean, I gave her pictures that were sharp and perfect, right? But to me, it's like more interesting. Oh, what's that? That's blur. You know, that's movement. That creates a sort of story, in my opinion. So, right, anyway. Right. And this is the last one on that shot. And that's Kate Houston again on that same day that we did the Martha Graham. You know, we did, uh, I just threw a red light in a room and I had a cucularis on the wall in the back. That's why yeah. the white looks dappled. And I get that from watching the film and TV work. And right. they use the cucularis sometimes just to break up a background. If you've got a boring bra background, you get a cucularis, you fire a light through it, and it dapples the light around, looks a bit more interesting. So, yeah, for anybody anyway, who's not familiar, cucularis is actually typically a, a piece of plywood that has uh, all kinds of cutouts, almost looking like um, just like kidney shapes and stuff, and it creates this uh, broken up background. Um, you know, simple thing to rent if you don't want to own one. And once you try it, it's kind of hard not to want one. So the next section we're going okay, to back to the back to the film and TV work. This was uh, this was um, another show by the fellow who produced Letter Kenny and the Bad Blood, and uh, he wrote this. This took them three years to develop, but they sold it to Super Channel. Now the sad part of Super Channel was that once they had wrapped the film and they had delivered the uh, eight episode series to them, Super Channel went bankrupt. So uh, it never appeared on their station, unfortunately. And it ended up showing on uh, Bell Media here on Crave for a little while. So they finally got it to air, but it was a bit nasty for them. But it, this is uh, written by an Italian uh, fellow, and, and he wanted to take the Mickey out of the Catholic Church. So, <laughs> you know what I mean? So, so uh, it's called What Would Sal's Do? And this guy is a character who gets out of prison and his mother is convinced that she, he is the res resurrection of Jesus Christ because all these small miracles take place. And uh, you can see this on CBC Gem, I believe, in Canada, if you're in Canada. And uh, this was the main story. But the mother is Jennifer Dale there, as you can see. And uh, I've forgotten this actor's name, but he uh, um, is the priest. And the two of them are convinced that Sal here in the center is the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And his best friend up there is trying to help him realize that he is as well. So <laughs> anyway, and That's we shot this in a church. too. <laughs> and I just thought for fun, people would like to see a little bit of us. This is all I'm going to show you the images and I'll go through them slowly. But this is the same shot. And you can see what the actors and this is going to lead me to something else later on. You can't tell the actors what to do. I've learned that the hard way, okay? Mistakes are the best educator, but the actors know their character and they know that what they want to portray. Now look at them. I haven't said anything to them. Right. The, uh, the producer may say something to them. Right, right. They're in character, okay? And he's pouring a beer in, in the chalice there. So anyway, <laughs> and so look at that, see? So look at that, see that first one? And then they change. And then they change again, see? And then they change Let's again. Let's go a little so, slower because I think it's uh, taking okay. a little bit of time to update. There it goes, it kind of okay. pop okay. through. Let me, let me go at the beginning. So I'll go. So there's the first one. Right. And so we see that one. Second. Okay, hold on. We see this one. Okay. And then do the next one. 
right? Hang hey, on, right? hang on, hang on. Yeah. There it is. Okay, we got it now. All right, one yeah. more. Yeah. And that one. That was a dud, that one, but I just thought I'd show you the four of them. That's the last one, and, right? <laughs> yeah. So, so I just want to tell you. How, yeah. Well, I, 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 you know, like when I want to light a gallery photo or a key art photo, I also get, often I'll get help from the grips as well, because the thing is that I need a stand in the background. You can see the two stands. I didn't crop this there, eh? And we put a huge strip box there behind them. Because in film and TV, when you watch a show, you often see their hairs lit nicely. And if you look at the historic photos that we looked at today, they have like a little hair light coming on top of them. So, right. you know, I'm following that rule for myself. I like the separation. I like the creation of dimension that it does. And if you yeah. can look at their hair at the top, you can see that. So we did that first thing. We set that up and we tested it and we metered it. And then the other lights was a key light coming from camera uh, camera right, right? And that was a big umbrella. And then the center was a fill and the left was a, another fill. So it wasn't the sh wasn't too shadowy. And those so would be like a couple of stops below the key. You have okay. a clear direction. So yeah. Yeah. So I knew what I was doing when I was going into this. And, and I didn't have a lot of key art, uh, what you call it, uh, drawing. For me he just told me how he wanted it to look and so we created it and uh, we did it on the spot really essentially so that was fun so anyway that i think that's kind of interesting and that's the end of what would sell do okay so are there any questions or anything right now well, actually a couple of things have come up, and uh one yeah. of them has come up a couple different ways and that's talking about dynamic range yeah. and i think this is a question i'll take up very quickly um somebody's asked specifically okay. how would you compare a phase one camera to an alexa and uh, I think in the in the, the the old classic you know glass plate wild range we went to film a lot of reductions happened and then you know even more reductions happened when we went to digital except phase went the other direction and went to a much wider range. So what happens is if you if you ever get a chance to experience it and try it, you've got so much range you can choose what to keep. And from that standpoint, you create that very film centric look that an Alexa can create. Whereas uh, a lot of products, when you try and shoot with these things with a typical DSLR, uh, you get a break on on the hard contrast, on the drop-offs, and and that makes it very hard to do these lighting things that Iden showing. Um, either you spend an enormous amount of time retouching all those transitions, or you're you're struggling with that stuff. So, um, you know, dynamic range I think is a really big key to how you're achieving a lot of the things that you're doing, Iden. So um, let me take it yeah. uh, right there, and I'm going to throw it back. Um, back to the next okay. section. Okay, well, the thing also, too, is that in, in most cases, I hand over the raw files to the um, designer, right? And and I always say to them, do you have Capture One? Because I'm going to be giving you face files. And if you recall, you and I had a little bit of a problem with that on Bad Blood Season 2, where you actually had to help the design team out in the West Coast uh, with Capture One because, uh, you know, the images were they were having trouble with. So. It's great hey, if you have all these assets, like yeah, Walter, yeah. for example, a team <laughs> on your team, believe me. You know what I mean? So, oh my God, they can't open the images. What am I going to do? You know, we always feel responsible. But anyway, never mind. Here's a case of what I was talking about before. And this was interesting too, because um, uh, this was with the, with, the, with the 360. And uh, they didn't give me any key art for this. This is called Milton's Secret. They said, just go into the studio. E, e Entertainment will be there running the show that day. We just want it lit, you know. So I said to the guys at um, E3K, oh, let me try out one of the big brown color um, Paralites, umbrellas right. or whatever. The Paralite, yeah. And uh, so I, you had the 177. And they said, oh, we're going to get the, the auditorium to shoot it in. Oh, great. So that morning, I bring everything there. I show up and they say, well, we don't have the auditorium. We have a room to shoot and i've got this gigantic para right anyway which went floor to ceiling practically so it was a very tight space but anyway never mind this is mia kirchner and she plays milk this is milton's secret which is based on an eckhart Tolle novel and donald sutherland is in it and a few other actors come and go who are fairly renowned but anyway never mind this is mia kirchner she plays milton's mother and this was the day where i said to her could you do give us some without your arms holding your hands and uh, it's like, 
I, ha I did like eight or 12 of these and she just wouldn't do it. So she ultimately did because E Entertainment asked her to do it as well. But you can see her expression. It doesn't change too much, right? <laughs> so, and like really she's the mom of this kind of game. Basically, yeah. Sorry, say again? It's her being in character. Yeah, but like, and I looked at that and I thought, is she getting irritated with me or something? Because I can't cook it. So anyway, she unlocked her hands eventually. So she's actually a very talented actress. She's been in a lot of stuff and she's very beautiful. And like, so she's Milton's stern mother here, right? And there's Donald Sutherland and he came on set. And he said, I don't want to do this unless I have my cell phone. So what am I going to do? You know, like he had a, he was, he's an extraordinary actor and, he, and amazing. And I enjoyed working with him for the most part, but when it came to this day, he was not that cooperative, unfortunately, but <laughs> you just are what you are. And then he, this is him in Milton. Yeah, you work with it. And finally he gave me some without, so you can see that. But here's the interesting thing actually. And here's Milton, the young actor who played Milton. Eckhart Tolle novel, Milton Sinker. The, uh, the interesting thing is that they didn't use any of those shots because <laughs> For whatever reason, they took a still that I took, that's my still, under a tree, and that's what they preferred to use. So it happens sometimes, you know. <laughs> what can I tell you? So I we've got pretty about good photos 15 in minutes uh, left. So, Aiden, just time-wise, we've got about 15 minutes. Okay, right on. Uh, should I do Letter Kenny or? Yeah, let's do let's do Letter well, Kenny. Because I want to show that portrait stuff if I if they, if we have time. So. Yeah, Oops, I think I think I, I think we'll we'll make time for it if we if we get close or if we have to go over it a little bit. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, there's a whole story to this, and uh, it's interesting. This is actually the uh, a shot that I took with a cambo. Uh, as I suggested, oh, wait, this is actually. Uh, Letter Kenny is a Canadian Screen Award-winning comedy. Is that what you asked me? I'm sorry. Yeah. And and. Um, it's shot, this is Hamner, Ontario, which is about a half an hour from Sudbury. And we all get put up in Sudbury and have to drive to the set when we're working there. And, but it's not always here, but it is for the most part on the farm. And it's based on a YouTube series that two guys put together and Jared Kiso wrote. And he took the idea to a director, uh, Jacob Tierney and Mark Montefiore, the producer, and Crave Entertainment decided they take a chance and do six episode web series. Well, it's become very famous now, and they're into their eighth or ninth season now. I've done five seasons for them. Anyway, long story, this is the image that you see, certainly in the first five seasons, that comes up as the credits run, okay? So uh, this was shot with my Cambo, and I just brought it. Like, I bring everything with me to set if I feel I need it, especially when I go out of town. And uh, so this is a three-image stitch of the main area. Uh, of the studio that they have up there. Why isn't this moving? What's going on here? Oops. Here we go. And these are the guys right at the driveway there. And this, if you were to go to YouTube, this is how it all started. They had a fruit stand. And uh, right. Right. it's loosely based on a small town in Ontario. And there's hicks and skids. And they're the hicks. These are the skids. And they're the drug users. And it's all it very has off the wall humor. Aiden, it's, there, there's a bit of a, OK, what? so these are the skids. Yeah, these are the skids. These are the hicks, and these are the skids. And the skids are the guys who are dealing drugs in town and all this stuff. And he wanted me to shoot this. He actually wanted me to shoot this with my face. So I shot that with the 160, actually. And that's using continuous light, studio lighting. So, um, And that's based on a Queen album cover, if you recall. I don't know if anybody is fans of Queen. I think it's one of their first early albums. And he said, oh, I want the Queen album covers. Okay, so I shot the Queen album cover. <laughs> Letter Kenny style. Now, this is interesting because I'm back to the Cambo here. And sometimes we'd stay over weekends in Sudbury. And I love the sunset over the rail tracks. And if you recall, the Tolisa photo that I showed you, this is the railway station, except we were uh, to the right there. You know, we weren't in the middle of the railroad tracks. And, and I shot that at sun on a Sunday on sunset. And I edited it and put it together. And when I went back to work on what was Sal do, because Letterkenny season one preceded Sal, I had it framed and I gave it to the producer. I actually had it mounted on some metallic thing. And he loved it. So what he did was he said, can you give me another one? 
uh, I want to give one to the mayor of Sudbury because he's got a good relationship with him. Anyway, he did, and the paper covered it. And this particular image is hanging in City Hall in Sudbury. So that was cool. You know, no charge, but that was cool. I love it. You know what I mean? I got lots. I got lots more work. <laughs> anyway, and again, here's the skids. This is from a gallery shoot. So I'm going to go here, and that's also from the gallery shoot, like oh, for the key on, we're not getting, So that's from the gallery shoot, okay? And then there was a second image. This one. That one there. This is the main photo they use for season one, and they have the right. logo at the top. You can see the logo on my. Can you see the logo on my sweatshirt? Sort of, not really well. Yeah. Okay. Anyway, that's at the top, and that's the main image they used. And when you do a gallery shoot, everybody from the broadcaster comes and attends, and they all stand and attend and look at the pictures come in. And then, then they tell the producer if they're happy or not, and then he tells me, oh, that's good. Oh, no, can you do this? You know? And that's from season two. So you see the logo up there, right? Now, right. this was from season two, and uh, it was a bright, sunny day, so there was lots of shadows. And uh, we did uh, three different setups for this because I did a plate shot of the backdrop, which they used. And again, that was the, this was the day after the wrap party. And this was for a seventh episode of the six episode season they did to celebrate St. Patrick's Day. And this was like seriously for hungover actors, like beyond hungover, you know, the next day. They don't. And so they changed that. They didn't want to do the gallery shoot the day after the rap party right so but anyway never mind so this so is all the backstory we're giving you <laughs> oh it was brutal man. and i thought i'm glad i don't do that anymore that's all and uh, again that's from the key art i'm just going to whip through these and that one as you can see was from that original key art too so i separated that out and you can see all the flags i have on the side there because i didn't want the light to spill back on me speaking in the camera yeah yeah and uh this again is from a different season of Letter Kenny on Seamless. And this was shot in the winter, this particular one. And I don't have the key art to show you from that, but I'll just show you. That was kind of fun to do. I love doing that. And they had Michelle Millet's hair dyed for that. And that's the four main characters from the show. I'll show you this if I went through that too slowly. Okay, isn't that wonderful? Look at all the great Seamless steps on it and all the people that walked on it, right? Anyway, I'll show you the image that uh, shows up. And I'm up on a ladder, right? And again, we have the brown color, but I had a I had a 133 this time. I think you yeah, got me a 133 yeah. brown color. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And see, it's pretty cool, right? So anyway, and that's all of them. And just go to the key art. There it is. And that's what we created from that. Hold on, it hasn't and shown that's up. Ultimate. Has it? Okay. It hasn't shown up yet. So we've got a barn with the two guys in front, but there's the key art. Got it. Yeah. Got there's it. the right. Now the this so so I hand all the stuff to the broadcaster in this case, City TV and their art department. And right. uh, because um, the the uh, bad blood stuff went out to the west coast to somebody else. But I had to chase these damn geese around behind a plaza uh, in Sudbury. And I didn't use the face for that because I had to run around and chase them and try to get pictures so they could use the damn things. So anyway, I did that. <laughs> that's the whole. And again, that's their poster for season three, I believe, or four. Yep. And that's all. And we have one more thing to show you if we have time. Uh, we've got about five or six minutes left. So is this is this the um, the final section? Uh, how many yeah. sections have you got left? No, nope, this is it. This yeah. is it? Okay. So yeah. looks like we're going to move into, into the final section here. So just before we do that, um, I wanted to uh, extend a challenge out to anyone out there who's uh, never worked with a phase one back. Um, and, uh, you know, we do rent them um, and we have special rates for people to test and try them out. Um, but uh, there's an interesting question that came up. Uh, somebody asked if you offer lighting workshops, Aiden, or do you work on a one-on-one -on -one basis, or do you, do you do any of that stuff? Well, I'd be happy to do one in, uh, at your office there if you wanted me to do one there. Uh, I do you know, do it, but uh, I, we, I, we can, I like somebody to help me organize it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah maybe we'll do uh, one here. Uh, yeah, yeah. That's a cool idea. Yeah. All right. We'll, we'll put I that think it'd on. Be fun to do actually. We'll put that on the list and see where it can go. So okay, let's move yeah. into the last section there. 
Well, I was just going to say one other thing about that, and I think it's always interesting to walk into a space that I do typically, and because and, and, they're bugging me all the time about where the hell are we going to shoot this thing? I mean, honestly. So I think it's fine to fund a space that is not necessarily comfortable and create a set. You know what I mean? So I think we should do that. Anyway, never mind. Um, okay. This is my personal trainer. <laughs> this is a portrait of her, actually. And um, she wanted some photos. And I thought, okay, I'm going to do my black and white thing, right? And uh, we made a giant for her mother for this, which was kind of fun. So this is just lighting. This is about portraiture and lighting. And uh, again, this is also uh, a model that I photographed in a studio with natural lighting. And this is all with my phase, so this is why I stuck that in there. The phase uh, IQ three one hundred is the proper. So Iden, like I her hand, yeah. almost looks like it's holding yeah. back the black in there. That that's 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 yeah. just incredible, you know. Uh huh. Yeah, she's like I could look at that for a long time. Not only is she beautiful, but I also like the, you know, uh, composition. So yeah, yeah. And it's the, just you know, no fill light, no nothing, just afternoon light there's a chap who's got a studio in the city it's a bit expensive to rent it but the right blows in and uh it's pretty cool and this is all uh something i did with a man from the congo and i just use uh reflectors and this is the only shot where he closed his eyes and i really like the feeling of it i think it's very sort of contemplative and very i shot peaceful. that in the studio yeah. and i think you've seen a version of that again this is uh that girl murphy that's her name, that girl Murphy. Now, if we go back to something I said at the beginning, you can see the kind of lighting I used here. And it's Rembrandt lighting, where you have the triangle of light under her eye. That's Rembrandt created that. Gazillions of people use that. They painted with it. And she is a beautiful woman. She's a dancer. And we did a whole lot of work that day, but I love this picture. And then again, here we are with some stuff. Yep. Here we are with some stuff that I did, uh, again, using that kind of continuous light in the background. And you can see the effect that you get from Jean, again, that guy you saw who was praying. And his right. eyes, he's like having a nightmare or something. <laughs> you know what I mean? So I love that. And again, there is a different one in color. You're, you're, you're basically doing it all in one exposure. So there's always a mystery as to how it's going to turn out. Absolutely. And that's kind of cool. I like it. So. Uh, I love these pictures. And that's a friend of ours uh, who used to be in a rock and roll band here who had a very serious accident in Australia. And he's still in a rock and roll band, Coney Hatch, it's called. And he was the guy who replaced uh, Burton Cummings in the Guess Who until he had a head on collision in Australia. And Ooh. they couldn't carry on with him. So, so uh, the doctors fixed him up. And uh, this is post accident. You wouldn't know it, right? He's full of titanium. And uh, he <laughs> lost one eye. And he's a. Fantastic person and a great guitarist. And I met him at a library event, and uh, his wife loved this picture, so they use it for publicity. And this is an actress I work with uh, in the studio for her headshots. So that's the end, of boys and girls. Awesome. All right. So well if there are any final questions, uh, we're ready to take them now. And if uh, not, I think uh, we can kind of wrap things up. So just as a final, final note, uh, on our Instagram page, you can see a one-minute video we put together of uh, uh, Aiden in action on a, a photo shoot happening here in our back back uh, kind of garden area, um, and uh, we look forward to uh, to maybe putting together some kind of workshop in the future. Uh, Aiden, awesome. That'd be fun. All right, so I'd love to do that. And also, I tell people about I have an Instagram page, and if you want to see some of these images again, go over there. A lot of them are on there, and click like <laughs> so, on my instagram thank you everybody always appreciates it. all right um there was a, a question here about um uh, what do you shoot uh with for unit uh oh well i do mirrorless now i have a blimp and all that but i shoot with mirrorless and i was shooting with a fuji but that one shot i showed you of uh, billy campbell was with a fuji x T3, but I had a 56 1.2 lens on it, so it had a pretty nice feel to it. But I just didn't like the resolution of the camera, so I sw I had a I had a Sony, and I switched back, and I got a Sony A7R3 right. now. So, all right, and I yeah. think that's it for questions. Okay, good. So thanks everyone, and we'll see you next time.